Mr. Marsh, you call your first witness. Call Terry Perkins, Judge. <clears throat> Mr. Perkins, if you'll come to this box over here, okay, and then face me when you just raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth when you testify? I do. Thank you, sir. Have a seat. Good morning, Mr. Perkins. Good morning. How are you today, sir? Good. Can you tell the jury your name, please? Yeah, Terry Perkins. And Mr. Perkins, where do you live? I live in Glencoe. Okay. And are you married? Yes. And what's your wife's name? Lori. All right. Before we get started in any facts or anything like that, do you know the gentleman situated to my left, known as Daniel Darnell? I do not. Okay, have you ever met him before? Never have. Okay. And um, let me take you to the date of April the 3rd, 2018. Do you remember what you and your wife were doing that day? We had uh, went to uh, El Nepal and got some dinner and was on our way home, so we were getting back on 71. Okay. Um, and so you were going home to Glencoe? Yes. All right. And so does that mean you went northbound on 71? We did. Okay. And when you were um, on the interstate, were you following any vehicles or what was traffic like? Yeah. When we came uh, off the exit to get north 71, <coughs> then we fell in behind a tractor trailer that was in front of us. Okay. Uh, and so we headed north. Okay. And... Um, how, how long did you follow this truck right before? Um, maybe a quarter to a half a mile. Okay. Um, and what lane were you in? We were in the slow lane, right-hand side. Okay. And about what speed were you traveling? Uh, probably 55, 60 miles an hour. Okay. We probably slowed down a little bit behind a, a truck going up the hill. As we get on the exit going up the hill, was, they're typically a little slower. Okay. And um, so you're following the truck. What happens? So as we're going up like a quarter mile, maybe half mile most, uh, all of a sudden as I'm driving along the, the semi just takes a hard right toward the uh, emergency lane, toward the guardrail. Um, so I immediately just slowed down and backed off to say, you know, something's about to happen here. Um, and just uh, traveled maybe a half a mile real close to the guardrail. Um, after the guardrails had ended, the truck continued to move over to the right a little bit. Uh, to the side and then began to slow down. Um, as it gradually stopped, we were coming up on it and that truck and trailer just fell over on its side. Um, and we passed um, passed the truck as it fell over on the side. That's when my wife called 911 uh, to report that there had been a truck turned over on the highway. Okay. So when the truck swerves over into the emergency lane, does it ever come back onto into the travel lane? It did not. It continued for probably a good half mile. Uh, at, at 50 mile an hour or so, speed uh, continued right along real close to the guardrail because I was, I was concerned um, that he was going to hit the guardrail or come back into the road. Prior to the truck swerving into the emergency lane, was there anything in the lane of travel that would have required anyone to go into that emergency lane? No, I never saw anything like that. Did you ever notice whether the truck had any mechanical Problems or anything? Objection, Your Honor. Uh, I don't think this witness is qualified to testify to that. Um, I'll rephrase. Thank you. Did you notice anything if the truck would require it to go over to the emergency line? I did not. Did you ever see a tire blow out? I did not see any shredded tire or hear any sounds of a tire blow out. No. Okay. And did you stop? We did not stop. Any other details that you can remember at this point in time about that today? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much it. It has been a little bit ago, but I do remember specifically those details because I was concerned that we were going to be involved in, in an accident. Okay. All right. Now, after the truck went over into the emergency lane, did you stay in the right lane? I did. So you traveled the length of the right lane where the truck would have traveled? Yeah, I slowed down and allowed uh, plenty of distance between us um, so that I would be prepared if something, and I could stop if something did happen. Okay. And 
you had said that the truck came to the end of the guardrail. Then what happened? So then it it's, was at regular speed until the ending of the guardrails, and then the trucks started to slow down, and then eased more right over toward the grass where the blacktop ends of the highway. Um, I'm assuming it hit that and uh, tilted or whatever, but did come to a complete stop after he got past the ending of where that guardrail was. Okay. Is that when the truck tipped to its side? It did. Um, no further questions at this point, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Foreman. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Perkins. Good morning. I'm look for a clock to say, <laughs> well, I'll always watch for when it switches from. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, good morning. And it's that 1201 mark. I don't know. Just OCD, I guess. Right. Anyway, um, so you said you were coming from El Nepal driving on 71, right? Yes, after we came, we got onto the, off to the on ramp 271 going 71 north. That is correct. Okay. Uh, you happened to see what you later learned to be Mr. Garnell's truck, right? You That's saw correct. A, you saw a truck. That's right? correct. We, we didn't hear anything about um, this till. Sure. It, I'm talking kind of after right. the fact. Yeah. But at the time, you just saw a truck, right? That's, that is correct. And you said that it took, uh, quote, a hard right towards the guardrail. Right? That's correct. And it traveled inches away from the guardrail for about, what did you say, a quarter or a half mile? Yeah, it was a good quarter or a half mile, yes. It never hit it? It did not. Not, not that I had seen. Uh, it, it, I had backed off enough that I probably would have seen the trailer hit that, but it did not. That's correct. It did not, to your knowledge? To my knowledge, correct. You also said that it never went back into the lane of travel. That's correct. At any point. Did not. It stayed next to the guardrail and traveled until the guardrail ended, right? It wasn't swerving in the emergency lane. No. It was traveling in a straight path, right? Yeah, it, the, yes. And he maintained the same distance from the guardrail the entire time until it ended. I was concerned about him, something happened coming back out, but yeah. You were concerned, yes. right? Yes. But you didn't see anything happen. Uh, other than the fact With respect to the guardrail, let's just talk, we're talking just about the guardrail now. I'm sorry, I should clarify. Sure. With respect to the guardrail, you were concerned that Mr. Darnell or a truck could potentially hit the guardrail. That brought your alerts. Or, or veer back into. Or veer back into, right? right? You can't just simply pass a truck like that, right? That's correct. That's it's it's I, potentially uh, dangerous for you sure. as a driver, right? Yes. So you have to be alert and you were watching the truck very closely, right? Yes. And after the guardrail was over, you're still behind the truck because you're watching, hey, what's going on here? That's correct. Right? And then you saw him, as you stated, gradually, right, move, I'm sorry, we need for the record, could you say yes or no? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Uh, you saw him gradually, I'm right? I'm waiting for you to finish your sentence. <laughs> it, it's a, it, yeah, it's a multi-layered question. Okay. Gradually, yeah? Yes. Moving into uh, the emergency lane. Yes. And at some point, you said his tires were even, were they on the grass? I can't say for sure that he did, but I, I'm assuming that's the reason why it would have tipped over. I can't say that on the solid road blacktop that it would have just fell over. So You're not a highway expert. That's correct. You're not a truck expert. Right? That is correct. Yeah, of course. Uh, but uh, you did say that the truck first came to a complete stop. It did. Before it began its tipping over. It was, it was almost simultaneous of the stop and the fall, but it was, I can't say it was exactly completely stopped, but it was, it was as near the stop as I would say it was stopped. I mean, he wasn't going like 40 miles an hour and all of a sudden. No, he did not. Okay. You then called 911? My wife called 911. Oh, your wife called 911. That is correct. Did you speak to 911? I, I was driving. You were uh, driving? Yes, because she goes through Bluetooth, so both of us were actually talking to the... I'm not trying to put you on the spot here. I apologize. <laughs> I got you. I understand. Um, okay, uh, so 
you called you guys called 911 collectively yes and uh, you went on your way yes that's correct no further questions <clears throat> mr. Marsh any redirect no redirect your honor okay is mr. Perkins free to go or is he subject to recall? Uh, I'm not going to subject okay. to recall, Your Honor. All right, you're free to go. Next witness, Mr. Moore. Call the work, Perkins. Ms. Perkins, if you'll approach the witness box, then face me. Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth when you testify? I do. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Marsh? Thank you, Your Honor. Morning, Ms. Perkins. Morning. Can you state your name for the jury, please? Lori Perkins. And is your husband Terry Perkins? He is. Okay. And we just talked to Terry for a brief period. Can you tell me what you remember about the um, early evening of April the 3rd, 2018? Uh, we were driving home and we were on 71 going north and there was a semi in front of us. Um, next thing I know is he pulls over and he's on the emergency lane going down maybe about a half a mile. Um, and the next thing I know is it stopped and then all of a sudden just tipped. At that point that's when I called 911 because I didn't know if anybody was injured or what. Um, and that's all it was and then we just went on. Okay. You say he pulled over into the emergency lane. How did he? How did this person go about doing that? Um, from what I can remember, because it's been a while, um, he pulled over pretty quick, and then just kind of because actually you could see the like the gravel on the emergency lane. So, like I said, that's pretty much how he went. Did the truck slow down? I don't remember. Okay. All right, and then. Um, about how long did this uh, truck travel in the emergency line? Like I said, it was probably about a half a mile, maybe a couple minutes. Okay. And was there anything in the lane of travel that you were in, the right-hand lane, yes. that would have caused him to have to get to the right? No. Okay. And then what happened after about that half a mile? Uh, like I said, he just automatically stopped, um, just a dead stop, and then just as that happened, the whole truck just went over and that went into like a little well there was a ditch over the right emergency lane and that's where the truck was and like I said that's when I called 911 okay all right no further questions Chairman. Mr. Foreman no questions for this witness judge all right Ms. Perkins you're free to go thank you next witness Mr. Moore. Brandon Meredith Raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth when you testify? Right, have a seat. <coughs> Brandon, can you say your name for the jury, please? It's Brandon Meredith. And by whom are you employed? Uh, the Carroll County Sheriff's Department. And what's your position with the Carroll County Sheriff's Department? I'm a deputy. And how long have you been a deputy of the Sheriff's Department? Uh, three years now. Okay. And at the time of April 3rd, 2018, about how long have you been with the Sheriff's Department? Two years. Okay. And prior to becoming a Deputy Sheriff, did you have to undergo any training? Yes. What kind of training have you had? I had uh, 23 weeks of um, training at the Department of Criminal Justice. Okay. And is any of that training focused on the issues of driving under the influence or DUI detection? Yes. And how much of the training is devoted to that? Uh, one of the classes is 40, and I think the other one's 80. It's two weeks for one of the trainings, and the other one's 40. Okay. And are you specifically trained during the course of your training how to administer standardized field sobriety tests? Yes. Okay. And are you certified then after you completed all this training as a deputy sheriff on all these topics? Yes. Okay. And you received your certification? Yes. You graduated training? Yes. All right. I'm going to take you back here. <coughs> April the 3rd, 2018, um, and you've heard the Perkins has testified. Um, were you dispatched to Interstate 71 that day? Yes, I was. 
And what was that in reference to? Uh, it was in reference to a semi that was on its side. Your Honor, just for the purposes of the record, is Trooper referring to anything at, in the, at the stand? I saw him glance down. I don't know if he's looking at something or not. Um, do you have your... I got a copy of the citation. Copy of the citation? Yeah, I would ask that the, the copy of the citation only be used for uh, refreshing his recollection. If he doesn't remember something, but we have to go for memory. Okay, uh, so Brandon, just testify to what you remember in the... Do you want me to take the citation? Yes. Yes. Thank you. The re-dispatch to Interstate 71? Yes. Whenever a call goes into the 911 dispatch center here in Carroll County, is there what we call a CAD generator? Yes, there is. And so all of these times and things when people make phone calls and calls are dispatched, is that logged on that CAD? Yes. Okay. And if I may approach the witness, Judge? You may. No objection, Judge. Thank you. Is that the CAD that is generated for the incident that we're discussing here today? Yes, it is. Okay. And does that, you've reviewed that CAD before? Yes. Does it fairly and accurately depict all the events as you know them to be that happened on that evening? Yes, it is. We can introduce this Commonwealth One. Any no objection? objection? So admitted. Okay. So, about what time were you dispatched to the scene? Uh, a little bit after 1800, 6 p.m. Okay. And um, what time did you arrive at the scene? Um, was there a police the cab? Do you need to refresh your memory? Uh, I arrived at 1814, so six minutes later after I was dispatched to the, uh, to the call. So you were dispatched at 608? Yes. And you arrived at 614? Yes. What time did the call come in? Uh, so this call created at 1805. So 605? Yes. Okay. Yeah, Judge, may I have the clerk mark the exhibit list? Yes. So where on Interstate 71 were you dispatched to? Uh, around the 50 mile marker, northbound. Okay, and was this in Carroll County? Yes, it was. All right. And what did you see when you arrived at the scene? When I arrived on the scene, I seen a tractor trailer. It was off to the right-hand side of the interstate. Um, it wasn't completely on the side, but there was a ditch there. It's kind of deep, and it was enough to where it was at an angle. It wasn't completely on the side, but enough to where it could have fell over on it. It's completely on the side at any moment. Okay. Were all the wheels on the ground? I can't remember up right now. Okay. And when... Um, <coughs> When you got there, did you make contact with the driver of the vehicle? Yes, I did. And do you recognize the driver in the courtroom today? Yes. And can you point him out to the jury, please? Take in front of him. Okay. Do you know the driver's name? Yes, I do. What's his name? Uh, Daryl Darnell. Um, I know it's been some time since you wrote this citation. Would it be um, consistent to you to review your citation as to his actual legal name? Yes, please. Your Honor, may I approach? Any objections to one? No, Judge. You may. Daniel Darnell. Sorry, I have multiple cases. Now, when you made contact with Mr. Darnell, where was he at? He was actually standing on the steps of the truck. The cab door was shut, but he was on the outside of the vehicle standing there. Okay. And when you approached him, did he say anything? Uh, he said that um, he needed somebody to pull his truck out so that way he could get on down the road. And were you ever able to get really close to Mr. Darnell at this point in time? Not at that point in time, no. Okay. And um, how were his mannerisms and things? Uh, he seemed nervous to me. Okay. When you say that, what do you mean by that? Uh, he just didn't say a whole lot. Just kept saying he needed somebody to get pull the vehicle out so that way he could get going um, down the road. He never come down off the truck at that point in time to you know talk to me or anything like that. Um, I advised him to not get in the truck at that time until we could get off the road as it seemed unsafe to be climbing around in there looking for any paperwork that I might need to work that accident. Okay. And what did you do at this point? Um, at that point I went back and I uh, radio dispatched to go ahead and contact our next big wrecker um, that we have on our list. And when you're doing this, are you able to maintain visual <coughs> contact with Mr. Darnell? Yes. Okay. Do you ever notice him get back in that truck? No. Do you ever notice him do anything besides sit outside the truck? No. 
And did they dispatch a record? Yes, they did. Okay. And what happened once the record got there? Um, uh, Big Rig got Pavex at 55 when it responded. They come down and set a scene up um, for the safety of those uh, guys that are pulling the vehicles out of the interstate. Um, at that time, I just sat back and let those guys do their job uh, once they got the vehicle out. And at this point in time, were you processing this as an accident? Yes. Okay. And do you ever ask Mr. Darnell for any paperwork or anything like that? After they get the vehicle um, out of the ditch and it's on the road, I then ask Mr. Darnell for um, his insurance and logbook for the accident report. Okay, and what does he do with regard to that? Um, at that time, I smelled alcohol in his person. Okay. Was it, um, so you were able to get close enough then to smell? Yes. You know? Okay. And you said you smell alcohol. During the course of your training and the course of being a police officer, are you familiar with the smell of alcohol? Yes, I am. Were you confident that that was alcohol upon his person? Yes. Okay, so what do you do at that point? <coughs> at that point, um, I uh, asked Mr. Darnell if there's anything that would prohibit him medically to, uh, to conduct a balance test. Okay, now you say a balance test. We talked a little bit about your training and, and standardized field sobriety test. Are you, and you said you were trained to do those. Yes. Are these the type of tests that you were giving Mr. Darnell? Yes, they were. Okay, and what test did you intend to give Mr. Darnell? Uh, one, the first test would have been the walk and turn, and the second test uh, is the one-legged stand. Okay, I want you to tell this jury how you were trained to administer a walk and turn test. Can you just do it from here in the box? Just speak it in words. Okay. Um, at the start of it, um, you have the whoever the subject is or the violator, um, they'll stand, I'm using my hand here a little bit, so if you don't understand, just let me know. Um, I'll stand over here to the side so that way, um, you know, I'm right hand, so I'm standing that way so my weapon's not towards whoever it is I'm dealing with. Have them stand there um, and kind of visualize a straight line. You know, we're on the interstate, we're not going to paint a line out, we're not going to do all that kind of stuff, so um, just visualize a straight line. At that point, I'll have the violator put their uh, left foot on this line. Um, well, before I do any that, I ask them if there's anything medically that would prevent them from, you know, balancing anything wrong with their legs, ankles, knees, anything like that. Um, Mr. Darnell stated that he didn't have anything medical that would prevent him from doing any tests. Um, at that time, I had him put his left foot on this line, his right foot in front of his left foot, with the heel of his right foot touching the toe of his left foot, and his arm stand, or down at the, at the side. At that point, he stands there until I get done, in that same form, until I get done explaining the rest of the test. Um, at that point, I'll tell Mr. Darnell that he's going to take nine heel-toe steps forward at the end of the last one. Number nine, he's going to take a series of small steps. He's going to turn around, and he's going to take nine heel-toe steps back, touching, you know, heel-toe each step um, as he goes. Okay. Do you demonstrate how to do the test? Yes, I did. Okay. And did you instruct Mr. Darnell just as you had said you were trained to do? Yes. And did you demonstrate this test for him? I did. And did he indicate that he had any medical impairments or any physical handicaps or anything like that that would prevent him from being able to do your test? No. Okay. And <clears throat> what, um, so how did he perform on this test? Um, during the instruction phase, he was unsteady on his feet, um, wasn't able just to kind of, you know, stand there the way that he was instructed to do so, kept um, picking his foot off the line to keep his balance. Um, when he conducted this test, um, he stepped off the line um, while he was doing his first nine heel toe steps. At the end of that first nine heel toe test, he was instructed to take a series of small steps, turn around, and walk back um, to where he started from. Instead of taking a series of small steps, he took his nine steps, and then he just took nine heel toe, or nine heel toe steps backwards without turning around. So he walked backwards? Yes. Okay. Um, any other um, observations you made during the course of this test? Now, what are you looking for when you're given a person on the roadside of this test? Clues of impairment. Okay. And um, did you, in, did your, Mr. Darnell's performance on the test indicate to you that he had clues of impairment? Yes. All right. You said you gave him another field sobriety test, is that correct? Yes. And which one was that? The one legged stand. And are you trained and certified to be able to give that test? Yes, sir. Okay. And 
Tell the jury how you're trained to administer that test at the academy. Um, Started that test, I always ask the units if there's anything that would uh, prevent them from taking a balance test. Um, at that time, I told uh, Mr. Darnell to stand there with his feet together and his arms down to the side and just stand that way until instructed to do it here, instructed to do so. At that time, I explained to him that he, would, he could use either foot of his choosing, didn't matter right or left, um, raise that foot approximately six inches off the ground, his toe pointed out, looking at the tip of his toe and counting out loud, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, so on and so forth until instructed to stop. Okay. And did he indicate he had any medical impairments or physical um, handicaps or inability to do this test? No. And did you instruct him just as you said you were trying to instruct him to do it? Yes. Did you demonstrate this test for Mr. Darnell? Yes, I did. Okay, and what happened when he went to perform the test? <clears throat> After I told him to go ahead and begin, um, he got the one, he said 1,000, 1,001, and he put his foot down after 1,001. He stared at me for a few seconds and then he raised his foot back up and he continued until I told him to stop. Okay, all right. And did, are you looking for clues of impairment with this test as well? Yes. And did that indicate clues of impairment to you? Yes. And are you trained that the things that you've told the jury about Mr. Darnell's performance on those tests, that those are clues of impairment? Yes. All right. Now, did Mr. Darnell, during the course of any of this, did he indicate any, or say anything about how this accident occurred? It said the road gave way. Okay. Were you able to observe the road where he would travel? Yes. Did you indicate any break in the pavement or anything to that effect? I did not. Okay. Um, was there any outside reason that you could determine for this accident occurring? No. And did you have occasion during the course of your investigation to look into Mr. Darnell's cab? I did. And this is a semi-tractor trailer, correct? Yes, it is. Is it, um, what kind of trailer is it? Uh, it's a box trailer. Okay. And in the cab of the truck, um, did you find anything during the course of your investigation that led you to bring charges against Mr. Darnell? I found open um, liquor bottles in the back sleeper area of the vehicle. Okay. And where is that in relation to where the driver sits in that vehicle? Um, the driver, of course, is on the left side. Um, the sleeper is right behind them. There's not a door or thing. It's usually just a curtain. But it was in the right-hand side over here on the passenger side where the passenger would be, but behind it in the sleeper part is where I found the liquor bottles at. And where you found those liquor bottles, would you consider that to be in the wingspan of someone in the cab of that truck? Yes. Okay. And meaning within arm's reach? Yes. I'm sorry, I use wingspan, a lot of people. So, did um, you take pictures of those bottles? I did. Your Honor, may I approach the witness? Uh, yes. No objection. You may, thank you. I'm showing you, I guess I'm going to get a duplicate, two photographs there. Can you identify this for me? Uh, one of them's a, uh, I guess you say a Lorex. Blackberry flavored brandy. Um, there's multiple bottles of that in there. There's also bottles in the back you can see tipped over that are Jack Daniels, I believe. And then I'm not, I don't remember what the big bottle was that was tipped over there. Are these pictures of the bottles that you took of the inside of Mr. Darnell's cat? Yes. Okay. And do those pictures fairly and accurately depict, depict the condition of the cat at that point in time? Yes. Your Honor, move to introduce the Commonwealth's two. No objection. Submitted. Your Honor, move to publish to the jury. No objection. You may publish. Thank you. Now, are those bottles that are used to hold alcohol? Yes. Were the seals broken on those bottles? Yes, they were. So they were open? Yes. Had the contents been either partially or wholly removed? Yes. Okay. <coughs> And during the course of you being out there with Mr. Darnell, did you ever lose visual contact with Mr. Darnell? No. Okay. Did you ever at any point in time that you were on the roadside and they were working getting this truck on and before you did the use field sobriety test, did you ever see Mr. Darnell eat or drink anything? No. Did you ever see him have one of these bottles in his hands or anything like that? No. 
prior to taking him from the roadside, did you search Mr. Darnell's person? What do you mean? Did you pat him down? I pat him down before I put him in my vehicle, yes. When you patted him down, did you find anything on his person? No. So no liquor bottles, anything like that on him? No. <laughs> All right. Now, after you concluded your standardized field sobriety test, you um, arrested Mr. Darnell at that point in time, correct? Yes. And you arrested him and charged him with operating a motor vehicle under the influence of alcohol, is that correct? Yes. And you also charged him with possessing an open alcohol beverage container in a motor vehicle, is that correct? Yes. And what, what did you do with him after that? Uh, after that, we left the scene and went to uh, Carroll County Memorial Hospital. And why did you go to Carroll County Memorial Hospital? To do a blood draw to get the, alcohol, the blood alcohol content. Okay. And is this standard practice of your department and the police officers in this county? Yes. And when you went to Carroll County Memorial Hospital, where did you take him to when you got him in the hospital? Went to the ER. Okay. And what did you do once you got to the ER? Uh, once I got to the ER, um, I had him sit in a table that's right there by the, the nurse's desk. Um, got the blood kit, got the paperwork that we fill out there, and then I read Mr. Darnell the incomplete consent. Okay, and do you have a copy of the incomplete consent that you read? I do. Do you have it there with you? Yes. Okay, I want you to read to the jury <coughs> what you read to Mr. Darnell. No objection, Your Honor. Objection or no objection? I said no objection. Sorry. Sorry. Um, the incomplete consent warning. I will be requesting that you submit to a test your breath, blood, or urine, or any combination of these tests. If you refuse to submit to any test which I request, the refusal may be used against you in court as evidence of your violation of KRS 189A-010, and your driver's license will be suspended by the court at the time of arraignment, and you will be, you will, and you will be unable to obtain an ignition interlock license during the suspension period. If you are convicted of KRS 189 a010, your refusal will subject you to a mandatory minimum jail sentence, which is twice as long as a mandatory minimum jail sentence that would be imposed if you submit to all requested tests. The results of any test taken may be used against you in court as evidence of your violation of KRS 189A010 subsection 1. If a test is taken, although your license will be suspended, you will be eligible immediately for ignition interlock license, allowing you to drive during the, or the period of suspension, and if you are convicted, you will receive credit toward any other ignition interlock requirement arising from this arrest. If you submit to all tests which I request, you have the right to obtain a test or test of your blood performed at your expense by a qualified person of your choosing within a reasonable time of your arrest. <clears throat> you have at least 10 minutes, but not more than 15 minutes, to attempt to contact and communicate with an attorney. Do you wish to attempt to contact an attorney at this time? And did you afford Mr. Darnell 10 to 15 minutes to contact an attorney? Yes, I did. And um, do you know if he was able to contact an attorney? I don't believe he was able to get a hold of nobody. After his time was up, then what did you do? Um, after his time was up, I read the next section was based upon the information which was previously read to you. I am now requesting that you submit to a test of your blood. Will you, sub will you now submit to the test? And how did Mr. Darnell respond to that question? He refused to take the test. He refused to take the blood test? Yes. Okay, what did you do after that? At that point, um, I go ahead. I gave the blood kit back to the hospital because we keep them there, and I took um, Mr. Darnell back to the vehicle and took him to the Carroll County Detention Center. Okay. And were you present during Mr. Darnell's booking here at the detention center? Yes. Okay. And when they booked him in, did they <coughs> take anything off of his person? Not that I can recall. Do you recall them taking any alcohol bottles or anything to that effect off of his person? No. Okay. All right. And is that where you lodged Mr. Darnell? <coughs> yes, it is. And did you actually cite him with the uniform citation for operating a vehicle under the influence of alcohol and possessing an open alcohol beverage container? Yes, it is. And that was all done that same night, is that correct? Yes, it was. And all these events and things that you testified to, they all occurred here in Carroll County, is that correct? Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> Morning, Trooper. This deputy. The deputy, I'm sorry. I deal with officers, deputies, troopers, I apologize. Deputy. Yes. Deputy Meredith? Good yes. morning. Good morning. Let me write it down to make sure I don't screw it up again. Um, 
Deputy, uh, you probably, have you been questioned before on, in a jury trial or in a suppression hearing? Uh, yes. So you're familiar, sometimes attorneys can grill you and ask a bunch of questions, sometimes it gets, it gets droning and annoying, doesn't it? Yes, it is. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can relax, it's going to be short and sweet, okay? I just have a few questions for you. Okay. Um, so, your job here today, um, you are a witness for the prosecution, right? Yes. So your job is to help convict Mr. Darnell, right? Yes. And uh, we've heard your testimony, um, but you're an, being an interested party. I'm sure we'd all like to see something uh, live, like video. Do we have video? No, we don't. We don't. Uh, so we can't see what really happened in this case, right? We have to rely on your testimony? Yes. Okay. You never saw Mr. Darnell drive this semi, right? No, I Personally. did not. Right? No, I did not. Okay. Uh, so it's your opinion that he operated under the influence, right? Yes. Uh, you said that you found uh, bottles in the back, right? Yes, I did. In the sleepers, you said, quote, sleeper compartment of yes. the tractor trailer, yes. right? Yes. Uh, you've conducted the balancing test, the walk and turn, and the one leg stand? Yes. Uh, you've also said that he seemed nervous when you first arrived on scene, right? Yes. Uh, you do realize Mr. Darnell was just in an accident, right? Yes, I do. So would a person who was just in an accident be anxious, nervous? Very nervous. So. Would somebody, in your experience, someone who is already anxious and nervous, would they have an easy time in the field sobriety tests? Uh, just your opinion and your experience. Everybody's different. Everybody's different. You arrived around 6.14, I believe, according to the citation, right? Does that ring a bell? Do you need a refresher? Yeah, the, the CAD says 6.14, that's when I arrived. I'm looking at your uniform citation. It says 6.14. Yeah, is, that, is that accurate? I think it it'll go off of what the arrival time of the CAD says, yes. And then uh, you, time of arrest is noted as 8.22. Yes. Does that sound right? Yes. So uh, two hours and eight minutes later, right? Yes. Um, do you have those pictures? Uh, the clerk has them. I'm going to refer to those. Now, uh, Mr. Marsh has already kind of indicated. I want to specifically refer you to uh, the second picture, which I think is in duplicate. Um, it looks like the bottles are on top of some type of refrigerator. Is that right? Uh, yes. I'm going to have those back. No further questions. Any redirect, Mr. Marsh? Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Right. <clears throat> Deputy, did Mr. Darnell indicate to you that that was his truck? Yes. And he was driving that truck? Yes. And it's your opinion, based upon all the evidence that you gathered there, that at the time he was driving the truck, he was under the influence? Yes. No further questions. Mr. Foreman, any recross? No recross, Judge. All right. Uh, Deputy, you may step down. Next witness. Come on, Thrush, Your Honor. No further witnesses. Okay. <clears throat> Send the jury out for five minutes. I will take a recess. I would advise you, remind you to not discuss what you've heard so far with each other, with anyone else. Um, you're welcome to go to the restroom, get a